Hi everyone. So today we are diving into one of the most exciting frontliners in the aerospace technology that is nothing but hypersonic propulsion. So imagine this, the world where you could travel from New York to London in under an hour sounds like sky fi right? But that exactly what hypersonic propulsion could make possible. So what exactly are hypersonic speed? Hypersonic speed are the defined as a anything phi and above. That is the phi times the speed of sound or around 3800 miles per hour. At this speed, the possibility are incredible. From defense to space exploration to realize the air travel, hypersonic propulsion could change the way we live and travel. But go to there. There are many unique challenges we need to overcome and that exactly what we will explore today. Everything from the technology behind it, the challenges and the futures of hypersonic propulsion. Let's jump right now. Now let's see the historical background of hypersonic tech. So to really appreciate where we are now, let's take a quick look back at the how hypersonic flight developed. So it's all begin with the experiment back in 1940s and 50s, like the X-15 rocket plan. This plan was among the more among the first to push in the hypersonic uh, trajectory, reaching the speed over Mach 6. Then come came the milestone like nasa x43 and the boeing's x51 project in early 2000s where the scramjet engine propelled this aircraft to record the breaking speed of mach 9 and mach 5.1 respectively so these pioneering projects laid the groundwork for what we are seeing today a renewed global interest in hypersonic technology so that what exactly make hypersonic propulsion possible. So now we are gonna look at the concept of hypersonic propulsion. So alright, let's break down the fundamental of hypersonic flight. So first, how hypersonic <coughs> different from supersonic. So both are the faster than speed of sound, but the hypersonic speed, this get really intense. Airflow around the aircraft hits up 
dramatically, creating the shock waves and causing the temperature to soar into the thousands of degrees. This requires specialization material and the engine design that can handle this extreme condition. So there are few terms that are essential to understand the hypersonic propulsion. The first and foremost is the Mach number. This is the measure of speed relativity to the speed of sound. For example, Mach 5 is five times faster than the speed of sound. The second one is the life uh, lift to drag ratio. This tells us how efficient an aircraft is at this speed. Higher lift to drag ratio mean better efficiency and stability. So, and the third one is the stagnation temperature. So, this is the temperature air reach when it's stopped moving. So, like in the front of the engine's intake, it is critical in the hypersonic design because it can reach the thousands of degree. So, understanding this concept helps engineers to solve the many challenges of hypersonic flight. But the engine themselves are what really make hypersonic speed possible. So, let's dive into the different types of hypersonic engine. So, here is an types of hypersonic engine. The first one is the ramjet. So, the first type is the ramjet and the ramjet are relatively simple. They don't have a moving parts relying instant on the speed of the aircraft to compress the incoming air for the combustion. However, ramjet have limitation and can't go beyond Mach 5 efficiently because they rely on the subsonic airflow within the combustion chamber. And then here is a video of how does ramjet engine works. So let's quick look at the operation of ramjet engine. All right. So although the ramjet engine developed by the French engineer René Lorenz was taken the patent in 1913, it was not possible to use it in the plane and rocket because there were no alloy resistance to high temperature at that time. And then the first use of ramjet engine in the aircraft was in 1940 in the Russian made Polycarpo I-153. Two ramjet engine were installed on the lower wings to support the nine cylinder and star type engine of the aircraft as you see in the video. As a result of the development process that has continued over the year and the first real ramjet engine aircraft is Leduc 2022 which was developed by the French scientist René Leduc in 1949. Ramjet engines were later used in various aircraft of different country, countries for the general military purpose as you see in the video. And then the ramjet engines as you see in the video do not have any rotating part like the compressor and turbine. All pressure and flow changes occurs in the hollow cylindrical tube. So in the video as you see the inlet diffuser or flare molder, combustion chamber, nozzle and exhaust which are the sequential subsystem of the ramjet parts. And then the ramjet engine must be moved forward for operate so it can need a turbojet engine or a catapult mechanism for the first motion and then ramjet start. As a result of this forward acceleration, dynamic pressure at the front of the engine, depending on the speed, is converted into static pressure at the engine's diffuser outlet, which has been animated with the video. According to the Bolognese principle, the velocity of the air passing through the increases between the inlet and diffuser in the narrow area and the pressure decrease. After the air exits from the narrow area, it's con entered in the combustion chamber when the air inlet in the combustion chamber area according to the new principal its speed decrease and the pressure increase as you see in the video air speed must be decreased for the burning in the combustion chamber therefore air speed always must be under the Mach number it needed to spark plug and the fuel nozzle for the burn purpose to start in the combustion chamber as you mentioned in the video with the red arrow and when obtain the sustainable pressure ratio and airspeed, the burn the way of fuel nozzle and the power plug start. So there is a spark in the video as a result of this burning, gases are moved forward towards the exhaust and the gases speed reach supersonic speed at the nozzle area. So which is mentioned by the red arrow. What gases exist from the nozzle at the supersonic speed? And it causes a react force forward direction as a result of the action force according to the Newton third law. And then the reaction force is called a thrust. So this is the thrust and the ramjet advantage. It can can be reached up to 5 max speed, do not have any rotating part and a high thrust according to the weight rate because of no moving part. 
and then when the disadvantage it can operate supersonic speed burning in the engine must be under a supersonic speed so as you see in the video and then ramjet engine have been used in the rocket engine helicopter and cannon bullet there are nuclear energy ramjet ionosphere ramjet and buzzard ramjet kind nowadays the ramjet engine are used very kind to purpose and the development process continue so it is all about the ramjet engine scramjet next so we have the scramjet or supersonic combustion ramjet uh, scramjet is also known as a supersonic combustion ramjet the scramjet are designed to solve the limitation of ramjet by allowing air to move at the supersonic speed within the engine this enable the engine to operate efficiently at the speed beyond mach 5 and the lack of moving part in the scramjet make them lighter and simple than the rocket engine the scramjet way the scramjet was a key to the success of the aircraft like nasa's x43 which it is the speed of mach 9 and the x51 which hits the mach 5.1 the potential for this scramjet to reach such a high speed is a major reason why so many projects are focused on advancing scramjet technology today let's have an quick look at the scramjet engine operation And the third one is dual mode engine. So another interesting design in the dual mode engine, which combine both ramjet and scramjet mode. The engines can start as a ramjet at lower speed and then switch to scramjet mode as they accelerate. This dual mo mode capability allows for the border range of speed, making it very useful for the hypertonic application and that need flexibility across the various speed. So now the fourth one is the rocket based combined combined cycle, which known as a RBCC as a short form. So finally, we have the rocket based combined cycle or RBCC engine. RBCC engines combine the rocket propulsion with the air breathing engine, providing thrust from the takeoff to hypersonic speed. And then they are incredibly versatile, allowing aircraft to go from zero to hypersonic without needing an additional propulsion system which is really an interesting things these all are the types of hypersonic engines so let's move on to the current application and testing challenges so where are the hypersonic engines being applied today so first there is a huge push in the defense sector the hypersonic missile, for example, are being developed to reach target faster than the traditional missiles. So, making them difficult to intercept the speed range and the maneuverability that hypersonic propulsion enable could change the modern warfare. In space exploration, the hypersonic propulsion could make help reusable launch vehicle more efficient and affordable by using the air breathing engines at the lower altitude before switching to the rocket engines this vehicle could save the fuels and the, and also reduce the cost also so however testing hypersonic engines present its own set of challenges replicating the hypersonic condition in the wind tunnel is though and simulating the required extreme advanced cfd techniques to accurate the model this flow this is where the computational fluid dynamics or known as a CFD is valuable. And then the, we look at the recent advan advancement and the future prospect. So now let's talk about some of the exciting advancement in the hypersonic propulsion. New material, material are the major focus 
we need material that can withstand extreme temperature without losing the strength or efficiency that is obvious recently scientists have developed the advanced ceramic and heat resistance alloy to improve the thermal management on the simulation side advanced uh, advance in cfd are making it easier to study the hypersonic flow in the virtual environment and this helps engineers to test a new design and predict how they will perform under real world condition and hypersonic uh, research in the global initiative this for example the us china and russia are all investing heavily in the hypersonic technology leading to rapid the advancement and the pushing the boundaries uh, of what possible so here is the challenges and the future of hypersonic propulsion of course hypersonic propulsion is not without its challenges so engineers are still working to the improve the fuel efficiency which is really effective to design the hypersonic stuff manage the extreme heat again this is also the essential and then increase the maneuverability so but what existing is the potential for the commercial hypersonic travel imagine the flight between the countries is less than an hour this could revolutionize the global travel and while there are technical and economical hurdles and the futures of hypersonic travel looking promising so let's to warm up let's quickly review the hypersonic propulsion is about the reaching the speed of mach 5 and above and then offering the potential of defense space exploration and possibly even commercial travel we have covered the types of engines from ramjet scram gel to dual mode and rbcc engines and then the incredible challenges engineers are working to overcome and then we have looked as hypersonic technology advances we are standing on the edges of a new era in the aerospace one that could transform how we travel and explore the space 